Welcome back to Come Knit With Me. Here's my little sweater. I've got it pinned together on one side. And I have a lot of tails which I'm hoping to use to seam it together. I think it came out kind of cute. These orange marks, they were just how I was counting it at one time. Okay, so I'm going to start with the the inner inner <sighs> under the arm where the sleeve is connected and oh, there it is I'm gonna pin it on the back side of it the back side of the red right so here's my seam Okay, let me Okay Take a long stick, make sure it's longer than the piece I want to seam together. Thread my needle, my, my needle, it's a darning needle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mattress using the mattress stitch take my glasses off Killer, you, you can't really see with that on there can you and I'm going to pick up the first stitch under the arm And the first stitch on the flip side. Okay, the first stitch on the back. And the first stitch on the front. Okay, now I'm not pulling it very tight yet. First stitch on the back, for, and the next stitch, and just work your way down. I'm picking up the, the top at the top of the loop of one row, and the base of the loop on the other. Picking up the first stitch. I'm going one. I'm trying to get the what else? Sorry, whatever row I start in, I follow that down, and I try to get the not necessarily the first row because that's a changing row. But I do try to get at least the next row over, column, stitch, stitch, row, sorry, excuse me, and I'm just picking up the stitch, working my way down, and after I get a little bit, Watch the seam come together. So you can't really, you can't even hardly see it. <clears throat> I 
<coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now, I will be back when I go to close this off. And what I'm going to do, I will start on this end. But in this case, I don't have any more long piece here. So I'm going to use this one to work my way up the sleeve. That way I use all my ends. Well, maybe not all, but I'm trying to use most of my ends. And if I don't use them all, I will just snip them shorter and about a hand's width. And then put them and weave them into the, the cloth, fabric, sweater, whatever term is convenient. Now, I do not edit my videos, which I've mentioned before, but I have some new people. And I don't edit it because I want you to see how to make, how to get out of a situation you got yourself into. The only thing I might edit is if I'm making a, let's say I'm doing a blanket and I cast on a hundred rows and I knit for two hundred rows. I'll film the casting on first row or two and then I'll go off camera and finish it up. That's about the only editing I do. Or if I get silly enough to tape the whole thing, I will put those into double time or triple time or whatever is fast. All right, I will be back. Got to make sure you... Go, yep, there it is. You got to go in where you came out from. In where you came out from. And if I do happen to run short on this, I just weave in the end and add another piece. Okay, I'll be back. Hello again. Welcome back to come knit with me. You can see I've got one side done. And we're going to go over the second side. Now, I found, let's see, if I started sewing it together at the sleeve, I haven't done any tugging on this yet, so it looks a little neater than if I do the edge at the end. Okay, so we are going to start here. Got my needle, and I cannot use that thread. Well, actually, I can barely because I can always go back down with that one. Well, let's go for it. I want to use up the yarn, I don't want to just snip it and go. I'm going to thread my needle. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up 
a stitch on the other side pull it snug and on this side I'm working on the ribbing part and I'm just doing like an overlap Oops. going in from the outside to the inside and do the same Always put my finger between the two. I don't want that stitch because that's where I went in on the previous row. So I'll go in on that stitch. Snug it up and do that all the way up. Now when I run out, I'll get me enough yarn. And start it at that point. I'll weave the little end in and then add the new yarn. Now after I get the ribbon the one by one ribbing I'll start on doing it with the mattress stitch. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and snug this up. Oh, sorry. I'm going to weave this end in. I'm going to see if any of my tails will be long enough for me to use. Now this, I'm just weaving it in. Okay. It's time to clear off my knitting machine again. I'll have to cut it later. Okay, now I have a fairly long one here for the sleeve. And that I could do, probably do all of it. So, I'm going to go ahead and start yep. at the underarm. have the work in this direction so that one hand can hold it together there we go okay now as I said I'm doing a mattress stitch on this you do the same for both sides now what I still have to do is I made the neck 
a little bit larger because I wanted to sorry I wanted to put a button on it I'm gonna have some false buttons on one side there we go and I will have real buttons you well not real buttons it's all gonna be real buttons you just want some decorative plain sorry about it and the other one is going to be useful. One side is just going to be for looks. Yeah, that sounds better. And the other side is going to be useful. Now, okay, just work your way down. me. Now you can make it a strictly pullover, but I wanted buttons on it just in case the baby's head, child's head, whichever. You know how sometimes they're big. I wanted to compensate for that. Try to stay in the same row of stitches You don't want it, if you're doing it full size, personally I wouldn't have it a real long thread. Sorry about that. That's because after a while of putting it in, see how it, it starts to separate. Now how I plan on doing button buttonholes. I'm gonna just make a chain and have that be the buttonhole. So I didn't want anything fancy. And by the time I figured out I wanted buttons there. Ida was already past that part of the sweater. Trying to only pick up one strand, but the full strand. In and out. I check to make sure. Not getting any puckers. Those orange threads, if you recall, I used to when I was counting it. I put in a strand every foot ten rows, so I knew how long it was.
go in and out and over going in the one I came out of see this one here that's the one I'm gonna go in on the way back I'm just going to put simple white buttons I'll be back when I get it finished I only got a bit more and I'm going to now this end's already tied in. I'll snip it off. And then we'll move on to the buttons. The sleeves, rather. Sorry about that, we still got the sleeves to put together. I'll be back. Okay. Getting ready to finish up the part of the sleeve I hadn't done yet. It would probably be easier doing it all at once, you know, from cuff to hip. But I want to save, do as little yarn as I can. There we go. On the sleeves, on the rib part, I just do kind of like a in and out. Okay, I've reached the end of the cuff, and now I'm going to do the mattress stitch. I'm only going to do a couple stitches on camera, and I'll be back to show it to you and do the buttons. All I'm doing is I'm going in and out on the same side, then over, then in with the same stitch, out on the next stitch and over in on the stitch I came out and up over and I just follow that same method all the way up until I reach the armhole and I'll be back at that point okay this is the sweater as you can see, it's a little bit too big for my doll. But you get the general idea. And what we're going to do now is put on some buttons. I've got two of these buttons that I'm going to sew. Maybe one. Depends on how it looks. But we shall see. I'll be back. Okay. Welcome back. I was going to, I found a skein 
that I thought was the same color so I could use this for a pocket. What I was going to do, which I can't because I needed to finish it up, is attach it here for a pocket. Actually, it would look kind of cute if I do it so it here and here for a little hand muff. Yeah, I like that one. But I can't do that because I have to use this to make the button straps. Okay, for the button loop that I'm going to be using. I don't have my crochet hooks handy, but some of you may not have one. So just use your latch tool. Make a slip knot. Which how I make a slip knot, I make a, cur a loop on my finger. And then I stick my thumb through. To do so you can see it. Just a simple slip knot. And I started out crocheting 20, but that was too long. So then I moved down five and then five, ended up with ten. It's just a simple chain. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And because my counting leaves a mite to be desired, I'm going to size it, make sure they're the same. And they are. So, close this one off. Okay. Get your buttons out. Which buttons? I think I already told you where they're going. They're going here and here. One's going up here. And one's going up here. Okay. I'm going to do one on camera and the other off. And I want to loop at the back of it. So I'm going to go in and I'm going about one, two, three, four, five, six in. And I'm going to pull in the, the tail end of this one. And I'm going to go over one stitch and pull in the tail of the other one. Now I don't want to... Yeah. I don't want to do what I just did. So pull back on the button loop. Now you're going to tie that just into a square knot. And then I'm going to weave that end in, which, good luck, right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my latch tool, and just weave these ends in. Okay, just go in and out. thread down and do the second one. I 
Okay. Now I will take the button. I'm going to make sure it's right below it, which is on this piece. Rib. Yeah. Beam. Now this, I'm not going to need that much of it. So I'm going to cut this in half. Okay, and and I don't want it right on the edge, which is where I went in that trip. I'm going to move down just a little bit. Now that's not going to work, but that's okay. Now this I'll probably use my needle. I want these threads to go out the back. Now, right now, it's just going to be loose, but I'll tighten it up in a little bit. I'm going to go in the one I came out of. back in but this time I'm not going to go in the same hole stitch just one stitch down okay and I'm going one stitch down on the other side picking up this thread that's going to help isn't it one stitch down pick up the thread Now then, I'm going to pull them tight. Might take some finagling. There we go. And just see how it's going to work. I like that. That's cute. Okay, just put a square knot and weave in the ends. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I am going to put the loop only because I can and I want the button to look the same. So I'm going to figure out where I want to put it. For right now I'm just going to use this as my marker. But it is one, two, three, four on the fifth rib. One, two, three, four on the fifth rib. So that'll be right here. Okay, now. Eh, it might be. And if you don't pick a one long enough, no real worries. And. Right about there. Okay. 
I'm going to leave that needle in there for a bit. Thread the needle up. Try again. Needle upside, button upside down. Thread the needle and pull the needle. Now leave it on there so that you can go back down. And now take that out. Now don't let that button get away from you. The button. Thread. I'm using tail end of yarns. That's why I'm being cautious. Because I don't have, at least I don't think I have any more of this darker tan. Okay, I can pull this out now. I'm not going to go all the way because i got to go in the other hole. And I just did that wrong. Okay, let's try again. I'm rolling it in my between my fingers so that I can slip it through. Okay, I want to go in where I came out. And now I can take my needle off. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go in just below the, just below the previous one. I'm going to go in this. Go in one stitch below, pick up the thread, and pull the thread through. And this time I'm going to go in one stitch down, go through the button, squish the ends, and fit it through. Sorry about that. Just do a square knot. Find out approximately where that pin is. Pin button, pull it through, go over one, and pull that through, square knot, without pulling the loop through. You want it tight at the next phase. Now I'm going to weave my ends in. I'm going to button the sweater. Okay, and there's the top of our sweater. 
little sleeves and the bottom hem. Not sure if I have enough to put the pocket here, but all I'm going to do is stitch it across the top, then across the bottom after I figure out where I want to do it or down the sides and across the bottom then up. I haven't decided yet. Okay, thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it and please come back to come knit with me. If you haven't subscribed please do so. I would appreciate it.